Good afternoon. I am recording this video from Miami, Florida. My name is Amalia Caputo. I salute you all. It is an honor and a privilege to be speaking here today. I am sorry not to be here in person though, but grateful to have the opportunity to share my research with you. I want to thank Fast Forward and its team for having me and the Momos Museum for holding this important conference. My research, The Ruin and the Body in Selected Works of Venezuelan Contemporary Women Photographers, thinks about the ruin as a way to think about what has been destroyed, deteriorated, or collapsed. As Marc Auger states in Le Temple en Ruine, to contemplate ruins is not to go back in history, but to live the experience of time or pure time. This is the case for Venezuela's recent history, one story of our times in which the experience of a territory of progressive decay remits to our perception of it as if it was shaped by a distant past. In 2017, the Time magazine had a featured name, State of the Ruin, Tales from Venezuela's Collapse by Andrew Katz. It was about Venezuelan photographers who were documenting the society crumble, reflecting with images that have moved them the most, taking during the times of the insurrections against Nicolás Maduro, Chavez's appointed successor since his death in 2013. In Katz's own words, Venezuela has lived a slow burn collapse of epic proportions. The body also dwells the ruin and becomes the territory that inhabits it. During the past 25 years, Venezuela has lived in a covered dictatorial regime with a major humanitarian crisis, followed by the historically largest exodus in the American continent and the subsequent devastation of the country's productivity, industry, and development. The country has suffered an important brain drain as it is estimated that almost 8 million Venezuelans have left, fled the nation, a rough 30% of its general population. Painful and conflicting emotions, atomization of families, violence, fear, precarity, loss, and identity issues are all subsequent conditions of this situation, along with the irreversibility of time passing. I ask, which concepts and specific formulations arise on issues such as gender, loss, and territory? Today, I will map five specific bodies of work of selected contemporary women lens-based artists in relation to the concepts of nation, ruin, and the body, and how the political and social implosion in Venezuela has affected their arts and lives. While it has also focused either on Venezuela or on the condition of exile directly or tangentially. And by doing so, one can grasp the magnitude of the tragedy of the loss of one's country. So the first artist I'm going to present is Erika Ordoscoiti, who is a poet and a visual artist currently seeking asylum since 2021 here in the USA. In Venezuela, her life was at risk as the vice president of the Maduro regime threatened to kill her over the public radio. Her apartment in Caracas was raided and bombarded, resulting in total loss. As Rita Segato states, women's bodies are read as geostrategic territory for conquest. Through a procedure called photo assaults, or those goiti challenges the aura of solemnity that distinguishes the city's landscapes and monuments with surprise actions in urban places. Accompanied by some accomplices and collaborators, the artist confronts her naked body against the raw material of the statues and landscapes before the incredulous gaze of passerbys, in which she most overcome citizen incomprehension and police prosecution. I'm going to show you this video that reunites some of her photo assaults. Yo soy un animal muerto. Lo único que puedo sentir es dolor. 
Lo único que puedo ser es agonía. Doy asco, no soy, no soy de aquí. ¿Dónde estará mi casa? Ajeno a mí no tengo nombre, ajeno a mí no me pertenezco, ajeno a mí no me sé. Soy lo que nadie quiere que sea, un error del control de calidad, lo que nadie quiere que sea. No siendo, es como soy, siendo, no soy. In her most recent work, she is aiming to find poetic interpretations to the trauma associated with leaving one homeland behind and the challenges faced during her displacement journey from Venezuela to the United States. Um, I'm going to show you a small clip from her asylum case that she is presenting. Pendiente, no hay nadie detrás. Mosca, mosca, mosca. Vida, que yo tuve una vez y era mía. Vida, vida parada, parada frente a mí, mí. mirada pesada. Vida, vida, sangre espesa, punta de mi lengua en los incisivos. The focus of these clips have a nightmare uh, kind of situation that stem from traumatic events that forced her and other people to flee the country and the challenges encountered during the journey upon arrival to a new territory. I will show you now the work of Blanca Haddad. Blanca Haddad is one of the most representative figures of the Latin American and Venezuelan underground. Her work is interdisciplinary, ranging from painting and poetry to video art, mixing autobiographical content with testimonies of social nature. After 20 years of living abroad in exile, she returned in 2021, right after the pandemic, to take care of her mother, who had just passed away a couple of months ago. In her passionate exploration of the human and the animal, Haddad invades her own viscera and those of her own with rebellious and savage gestures. Her videos, poems, and paintings reflect the power of that vital transgression that needs to come out in form of gestures, words, or dances, in which she mixes autobiographical content with testimonies of social nature. I'm gonna show you two clips of her work made during the post-pandemic period, in which also there was lots of scarcity, food and medicine in Venezuela. Thus, bringing a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. Es muy loco, porque le hemos puesto rejas a todo, a nuestra casa, a la naturaleza, a las relaciones. Hemos querido convertirlo todo en propiedad. Y de repente nos damos cuenta que estamos rodeados de rejas. Aquí no hay hospitales, no hay, no hay medicamentos, no hay nada, señores, no hay nada. Nada, nada. Esa es la palabra que más se ha repetido esta semana, o que más he repetido yo esta semana, o que más me han dicho esta semana. Todo lo que los hombres construyeron parece no funcionar, es una locura. Pero la naturaleza, la naturaleza está más bella que nunca. Y me quiero refugiar en ella. Así que como vino el agua a las 11 de la noche, salí corriendo a bañarme. The next artist that I want to show you is called Ángela Bonadíez. Venezuelan born, has lived in Madrid uh, for the past uh, 10 years. Her work is mostly photographic, although it also includes publications, installations, drawing, objects, and graphic work. Her work focuses on the construction of archives, on the dichotomies between people and power, on the reflection of architectural spaces and its relationship with the broken structures of a country in ruins. Her work is located between the positioning of a contradictory discursive axis and very often centered on the idea of a place, be it geographical territory or architecture and on Venezuela as a problem. Her, she has worked extensively on issues related to immigration, ruin, 
the permanent and impermanent nature of a country in a constant social, political, and natural transformation. I'm showing here Estructuras de Excepción, which is a body of work that she did for approximately five years, um, documenting many um, architectural buildings that are in a condition of ruin. This is a body of work called Structures of Exception, in which the notion of exception can be structured as part of a governmental program that aims to envelope and isolate its citizen by showing off exceptionality as a form of power. It is worth em emphasizing that a state of exception means a permanently armored state. This body of work is a tangible yet symbolic example of this fragmentation of a country and the collapse of its structures throughout the country. I'm going to show you a video in which you can see some of this uh, body of work. In 2010, Bonavies with Olavarria initiated a project called David's Tower. It was based on the occupation by families and homeless people of the Confinanzas Financial Center, a 45-story skycrapper that was the third tallest building in Caracas at the time. It started to be built in 1990s as a part of a urban plan that was promoted by businessmen um, who wanted to create a Wall Street in Caracas. The work on the building was halted in 1994 due to the bankruptcy of the group. And by 2007, the building had deteriorated significantly, but it led to impoverished families to occupy it. At its peak, the building housed 900 families, a totaling around 4,500 people. With legal backing from the housing cooperative, the occupants constructed their homes and lived there until 2014, when they were forcibly evicted by president dictator Nicolás Maduro. This is the work of Caroline Mejia, currently lives in exile in Buenos Aires. Her work speaks about the reconstruction of a family memory through its albums, departing from its photographic reproductions. Carelis calls about the awareness of what the family album means within the family nucleus from exile as a bearer of loves and intimate stories for the family. The album recognizes the existence of a relative or banishes them. In the process of exile and migration, the album suffers abandonment and rupture. Images leave the repository to follow a new place and the fragmentation of the family history can be considered as well as a ruin. Something that stays there sitting while time passes and deteriorates and holds fractures memories that remain part of the all untold stories. This is uh, her series, the precarious series uh, that rises from the need to open a dialogue with forced immigration. She considers the family photography as a bridge or an emotional link to the other and the body as a vehicle that carries affections, communicates emotions, and pretends to be a testimony of the representation of a generational diaspora, which is that of Venezuela, and how, being part of a massive exodus, she tries not to lose the link or not completely to break the family ring. It speaks of a spatial and effective dispersion and the progressive process of losing both memories and continuity in the family narratives. Lastly, I want to show you the work of Adriana Loureiro Hernandez. She's currently based in Venezuela and her work focuses on social conflict and youth culture from a documentary viewpoint. 
She produces long form articles and breaking news that balance traditional media styles with innovative angles and aesthetics. She emphasizes journalistic rigor in her work, especially in projects that are done researching thoroughly and sourcing. In her words, Venezuelans are the second largest refugee population in the world, second only to Syria. Venezuela is the murder capital of South America, the wealthy gem that turned to rock. It has the largest inflation rate in the world, the lowest wages and the highest poverty rates in the hemisphere. The most crowned beauty queens, the longest waterfall one of the highest teenage pregnancy rates. While millions, millions flee, others try to survive. The rest does not survive at all. And she continues, dying here is so easy and in everyday matter. With the years, it's been really embedded in people's minds. If they are here or not, no one cares. This is especially true for very poor, poor people. They just get killed, and the idea of justice is disappearing, if not completely gone. In recounting the narrative of an oppressed nation for a quarter of a century, one confronts a landscape marked by societal decay and the predicament of its inhabitants. Venezuela's story is one of profound inequality, pervasive social deterioration, and enduring health crisis. With the vast majority struggling for mere subsistence amidst precarious employment, inadequate healthcare, and rampant violence, the country emerges as a complex tapestry of poverty amidst few privileged pockets of extreme wealth. Photography as a mean for retrieving memory, for documenting life and showing itself decay, is a powerful tool to denounce from different perspectives the bodies despised by the government, which continually highlights how little the lives of citizens are worth. I aim here to delve in the role of the artist as an agent of change, denunciation, and activism. The ruined body experiences and the degradation of the spirits and the flesh are only a reflection of the chaos that has prevailed in today's Venezuela. On the other hand, the city, Caracas, and the rest of the country and its ruins are the living organism that represents this state of ruin. The works of these artists here presented allows us to contemplate this process of deterioration of a country that has decomposed before our eyes. The macabre thing is not the representation of the body, but precisely the manifestation of the causes that have led these bodies to their ruins. They raise the pain and misery that human conflict inflict on other humans. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good evening.